Hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome to the Academy Answers Podcast. I'm a little late this morning. This is um, after midday, um, around 2 o'clock in New York. And um, usually I do these things pretty early in the morning when I wake up. But this um, question that I may have answered 10,000 times already, but I feel like it is at the pillar of what I talk about. So I have no problem doing 50 podcasts on the same thing. Because as Samuel Jackson said that, we often need to be reminded than we need to be instructed. We often need to be reminded more than we need to be instructed. Um, Most of us know what we need to do. Most of us know um, how to do it. Most of us know what to do, but we constantly have to be reminded. We constantly have to be exposed to different perspectives, different methods, because that's how the brain works. Um, different things are triggered uh, at different points in time and something that probably the same stimulus have a different um, re- um, effect in, in different circumstances. If you get somebody with the same message when they're at rock bottom, um, it rings through to them better than when they're okay. It's just like that's how the, the brain works. as the reticular activating system in the brain work. If you start to look for a black Honda Accord to buy or if you buy one, you've never seen them before but the minute you bought one or start to think about getting one then you'll see them popping up everywhere it wasn't that they that they weren't there before but um now that you have heightened your awareness you start to actually see them because the brain cannot continue to get all the information that is out there because we are exposed to human beings according to some study are exposed to 60,000 messages per day. The brain doesn't process all of that. It filters the one that is important. That's how how, how it works. And and that's why you you know you're able to keep saying and to focus on everything else because the brain does a lot of filtering and optimizing. It just passes over all the information that's not important and it brings the ones to you that are important. So I don't have any problem doing this um, specific podcast about my set of steps that anyone can use to change their lives. Anyone can use these things to change their life while, as long as they have their faculties. And it's a popular question. It's a popular thing for people who speak like I do on this topic or any topic to give their six list of things. And people like to ask those questions. You know, I used to watch this program that used to come on local channel um, back in Jamaica where, where, where that I used to live. It's, it's a music um, oriented type of program that um, this guy used to do. And he used to speak to a bunch of entertainers that come on. He used to bring them on and the name of the show was Intense. So his first question to them was always, what are the five things that make you intense? And it's funny how people used to struggle with that. Um, He was pretty much trying to get them to say, what are five things that stand out about you? And um, people are always struggling to answer that question. And it used to amaze me that people never really take the time to know themselves. If you ask somebody about um, their favorite basketball player, their favorite singer, um, they just know all that information. Their favorite um, place to hang out, restaurant, menu, they know that. But if you ask people about themselves, they pretty much don't know. So there's always this question going around what are your five tips for success what are your five tips to change your life what are your five mindset people are always asking these questions i think it's a it it is valid but it's a lot it's punch and you know the media and anything that goes to publicity like punches so i am asked this question too what do you believe are the five things the six things the steps all that I'm not knocking anyone's step, but I have my own steps that if you pick up most of the successful people in the world, upcoming people who are successful, people who are wealthy, the older generation, the newer generation, you will come up with pretty much interchangeable um, fundamentals of success. They're, they're, they're interchangeable. They're, they're like... They're similar. They, they can be matched together. They can be interchanged. They intertwine. 
But if the way I put it, because I was asked one day, say if you are only to spend, if you are to spend three minutes with me, or if you are to leave me a note in one minute, what would you leave with me as a route to get to where I want to get to in life? What would you? What would be your solid principles upon which anybody can move their life from one place to another when it comes on to success? And today. I'm gonna give you my six. I might have one seven, but this is my six. This is what I always champion. This is the way I see it. The first thing is that you must first be aware, understand how things work internally and externally. That's the first thing you want to start to do. You want to start to get the information. How your mind works, how the body works, generally, how businesses work, how systems work, everything that you are part of that you think might play into your success, that might affect your success, understand how it works. So you're going to use your body to do the work, you're going to use your mind, your intellect to do the work to get to where you want to get to. You need to have a general understanding, running knowledge, working knowledge of how your body and mind work, how the brain learn things, how the body acts physically what make you and what energizes you what drains your energy what keep you at optimal productivity understand those basic things you want a level of awareness about how things work how money works how businesses work how economies work you want to start to avail yourself with that information that's the first thing you want to do the next thing is you must pick your vehicle what is it that is going to take you to the success that you need? What is that vehicle that's going to get you there? What are you going to use? What is the profession? What's the business? What's the model you're going to adopt to get to that place that you need to get to? you got to pick a spot. What is it that you are going to use? People have done it in a million different ways. What is it that you are going to use to get there? And are there people who have used that to get to the levels that you want to get to? Are there proven models out there of people who have used this thing to get to that level that you are aspiring to get to right now? First thing, do that research, think about it, understand it, know about it. After you have chosen what you have identified what you are going to use to get there you now need to understand which is now the third thing you need to understand what belief systems people use to execute on this process what belief systems are those belief systems in alignment with the belief system you currently have. You know, we have the belief systems like um, money is the root of all evil, but then we want money. Now, if you believe that money is the root of all evil, that's contradictory to wanting a lot of money. You will not have a lot of money because you have a subconscious paradigm that you're running that's going to be contrary to that. You're not going to get it. The second thing, another thing that is popular is that money won't make you happy. That's not the statement. First of all, um, money is the root of all evil is not the statement. The statement is the love of money is the root of all evil or many kinds of evil, whichever one you pick. And the other statement of money does not make you happy, that is not the statement. Money alone does not make you happy is the statement. That doesn't mean that doesn't exclude money. That doesn't mean money is not in the mix. Actually, it is right up there in the mix. If you're stressed out, if you're pressured, if you can't pay your bills, if your family is not fed because you don't have money, you will not be happy. It is that money alone will not make you happy. So you got to check your belief systems. What belief systems do you employ? And are they in line? Do Are they um, compatible to the belief systems that the people are the things that you want have do they match up are they 
in sync. You got to decide on that. If they're not, you must change them. You must switch out your belief system for the new ones. Fade comment by here. Now you have to expose yourself to the people, circumstances, material, and information that support the reprogramming of your belief system. Many people have had to change their whole belief system about life, business, and money. You have to do that. Once you have done that, the fourth thing is to employ a proven model. What system, who are you going to model to get to success? Success, leave clues. No one needs to reinvent the wheel. Success leave clues, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You do what other successful people do and you will get to success. That's it. Pick up the model that they're using, model it. You can look around all you want. The cars, different car companies, same car. The supermarkets look the same, the apartment buildings look the same. The, 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 the dishwashing liquid bottles look the same. Different companies make them. They pretty much look the same. Why do you think they're doing this? Because they're not trying to reinvent the wheel. If it works, it works. If it's not broken, don't fix it. As Mohammed said, it takes a man about 75 years to learn how to live on his own. You have to stand on someone else's shoulder. Shorten the learning curve. If someone else has done it before, you don't have to make the mistakes and the pitfall. They have it in a book, they have it in a course, they have it in a training. Go learn it, implement it. You will get the chance to add your touch. You will get the chance to be creative, but shorten the success learning curve first before you start to get all creative and innovative and tweaking and twisting things. Remember, what you want might be poles apart from what the market wants. What the market react to might be poles apart from what you think the market will react to. Ultimately, your market and not you is the greatest test. Many businesses that I've started have morphed into businesses way um, different from the ones that I eventually conceptualized and started. And that is true for so many business people. The next thing is that you now have to decide on the schedule and the budget. I talk about this so much time. I talk about this so often, so many times, so often. I talk about this. Unless you pour hours upon hours upon hours, what Stephen Covey called the 10,000 hours to be great rule. Unless you put the time in, and the money in, you will not be able to achieve what you set out to achieve. There's no use saying what you want, what you're gonna do, if you don't block the time, if you don't block the resources to execute. We know how things are done. Things are done by blocking the time, spending time, and by acquiring the resources that you're gonna employ in pursuing this process. It is a process, it needs resources, it needs time and effort. So, where is your schedule, where is your budget? That's the idea. The time to learn, the time to work, the time to do, the time to test, the time to redo, the time to try again the money to get more information, the money to buy the tools, the money to buy the resources, the money to go to the webinars, the money to go to the events, must be considered is a vital part of the process. That's number five. The sixth thing is, where is your mindset? Do you have a growth mindset or not? What do you think about the process that you're in? How do you, do you, are you a know-it-all? 
do you think that this is the way? Are you adaptable to change? Are you willing to learn? Do you have a teachable spirit? How do you view failures? Um, how do you um, focus? Are you committed? What type of mentality you have? What's your approach to problems? How do you set goals? All that must come into play. Your mindset is crucial. So those are my six. It is knowing, awareness. Secondly, the vehicle. Thirdly, um, the processes, the plan of action, what proven system, pick the spot. Fourthly, how are you going to execute your time and energy? Is that number four or number five? The time and the resources, your schedule that you're going to put in it, and the mindset. I may have missed one coming back or rechecking. I don't remember. But your mindset. What are you going to do as my final one? So that's either five or six. Those are my processes. That's what I talk about all the time. How are you going to get there? And do you have that growth mindset? Do you know how you're going to... Have you chosen the vehicle that you're going to use to do it? And if you employ these things, then you are well on your way to achieving what you set out to achieve in this life. And you know, when you talk to me, I'm only talking about big goals. I'm only talking about big achievement. I do not subscribe to small stuff because small stuff becomes nothing. They disappear in no time. They are not strong enough to stand the test of time. Him aim big all the time. Go for large. Go for big. Go for massive results. And that's the only way you can ensure your sustainability out here and success that can last a lifetime. Wealth, the very definition of wealth implies large and sustainable. Have a good one, guys. Always a pleasure. Thanks for listening. Share this podcast. It's always a pleasure to come to you. Thank you.